Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, so in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to go get uh, VS Code set up for remote development stuff. So this could be, you know, connecting to a Unix or Linux machine to uh, put together some Python code that you want to go run in a, you know, uh, a Linux environment. This could be uh, managing, you know, uh, Ansible uh, YAML files for, um, you know, uh, that kind of environment, whatever it is, VS code is a, is a really nice IDE. Now in this, um, in this example, I'm going to be doing this using a windows box because I think that's a little bit more challenging than if you were to do this from a, um, you know, a Linux or a Mac system, they, they have SSH natively available. Uh, it's pretty simple to, to get it set up. So the way I'm going to go configure this is to be, uh, is going to be to use uh, chocolatey. Uh, if you're not familiar with Chocolatey, Chocolatey is a Windows um, a package manager, effectively. So it's it's the equivalent to apt uh, or package or uh, DNF or yum, but for Windows. So it's sort of an alternative to the Microsoft Store, but also just sort of like going and finding packages uh, and getting them installed. So uh, if I go switch over to my... Um, uh, kind of desktop uh, view. I need to go actually change this so it uses the right camera interface. Um, actually, I'll just I'll just skip over that. I'll go just to full screen mode because it's going to have some text anyway. So that's probably a nicer way to go do this. So the first thing I'm going to go do is I'm going to go open up a browser um, and I'm going to go find the uh, Chocolate download page. I think it's just chocolate.org, but I'm just going to go do a search for it. Whoops. Let me go do this chocolatey. If I can type. So just for a chocolatey download. And it, uh, you know, nicely spelled correct for us. And we mess it up. So I'm just going to go to chocolatey.org, which is in fact the website. Uh, and I'm going to go make this a bit bigger. Uh, I'm going to go over here to uh, get started. And basically what they're going to do is they're going to have you go run this script in uh, a PowerShell terminal that you go run at as administrator. So I'm going to go over here to PowerShell, right click on the PowerShell binary, say run as administrator. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste this in there and click return to get this guy installed. So. Um, it's going to go through a little bit to, to get this installed. It should now uh, have the Chocolatey Package Manager basically set up and ready to go. Now, because the, the path that Chocolatey is installed in uh, is not available by default, um, you basically either need to go um, you know, type in the full path to the, the Choco program, or you can just you know, close the terminal window, open it up again and then go run as administrator uh, again. So I'm going to go ahead and do just that. So we've got our PowerShell terminal running. Um, and actually, let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. So let me go to properties here and change my font to like 24. So hopefully that's a little bit easier for you guys to see uh, in the uh, smallish window. Uh, so what I'm going to go do is I'm going to type Chaco. Um, dash V, which gives us the version. So also kind of shows us that we have this installed. So I'm going to go type <clears throat> Chaco install dash Y uh, for yes. I'm going to go accept all of the licenses and things and type VS code. Uh, I'm going to do VS code dash Python, uh, open SSH. Uh, and Python 3 and Git. All right, I'm actually also going to install Chromium because I'm also doing this for a lab environment. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here. So hit return. Um, it's going to go, you know, take a few minutes to, to go find these packages uh, and get them installed and set up. Um, so the OpenSSH package that we're going to have installed for us uh, is going to allow us to, you know, use 
just like a, a normal SSH command from our prompt. So this could be, you know, just the, the kind of standard uh, PowerShell terminal or, you know, uh, whatever you would like to install. It could be Terminus, it could be whatever. Um, and, you know, once you have that installed and set up, you can basically just use, you know, uh, SSH, username at host. Uh, you can go ahead and use SCP, all that kind of stuff. So uh, what that means is you don't necessarily need to go use PuTTY anymore. Uh, not that PuTTY is bad, but if we're going to go try to go integrate this with something like VS Code, it's going to expect a, you know, the ability to go SSH to, to different things. So <clears throat> again, this is going to take a few minutes to, to go install. So, you know, you're, you're welcome to, to kind of fast forward through this, this section. Uh, basically what's going to happen is we're going to come back and then we're going to go do an SSH key gen. Uh, now, the open SSH implementation that they have installed here doesn't have uh, SSH copy ID. So we're going to need to go ahead and, um, you know, basically just, uh, uh, you know, either cat the um, SSH key into uh, authorized keys if it, if it already exists. In this example, I know that we don't need to do that because there's no SSH keys already installed on the server that I'm connecting to. So um, however you want to go do it, you need to make sure that you have a SSH key in the .SSH directory on the, the server, the system that you're connecting to, um, so that you can go ahead and have your, um, you know, uh, your private key authenticate to it. So pretty simple, nothing, nothing crazy. So we'll give it a few more minutes while this, uh, this finishes up uh, installing. We're uh, already done with a few of the packages already, it looks like. So we've got, um, you know, Python 3. If we sc scroll back up here, I think that was one of the, the next to last packages. So we've already got a, a good number of things set up installed. So it should be pretty quick now. And it's doing all the kind of stuff that you would expect. So it's it's got, you know, uh, dependencies and all those kind of things are, are being taken care of for us. So I think as you saw this go by, you saw there was a couple um, you know, security updates and stuff that were installed uh, that were required by um, particular programs that were, were being set up. So uh, we're down to Git, which I think is one of the, the last ones. And then once that finishes, uh, we should be good to go when it comes to uh, to use this. So... <coughs> So in this environment, this is a uh, this is a lab that I'm connecting to remotely, and the way that that's set up uh, is you log in as the administrator account. So when I'm going to go, you know, uh, close the window and and kind of, you know, um, open it up again so I can go use the programs. Generally, it's it's not I don't know not really required in this context, um, but. What you would want to go do is you'd want to go generate your SSH key as a normal user. So in order to go install programs with Chocolatey, you need to be an administrator account on the on the machine, uh, just like you would you know use sudo on a Linux box. So what we're going to go do is we're going to we're going to close this out, and then we're going to go open up a, a, a you know PowerShell terminal again, uh, and now I can do you know just a SSH dash uh, capital V I think it is for version. Yeah. So you can see that we've got uh, open uh, SSH for Windows version 8 uh, installed. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to do SSH key gen. And, you know, if you want to, you can go use, you know, non-standard um, key types. So uh, there are more efficient uh, SSH key variants than, you know, RSA. I'm just going to go take all the defaults, leave a blank password, um, so we can go ahead and use this uh, nicely. So the next thing what I'm going to go do <clears throat> I was going to do a cp dollar sign uh, whack dot ssh whack id underscore rsa dot pub to tilde whoops that's not what I meant to do uh, tilde uh, and then dot ssh and authorize keys And the um, <laughs> the lack of, of sort of uh, correct typing in the first 
example was because you can't really I mean you can you can tab complete it um, and it will expand the tilde to your home directory but it then has like a super long you know path so it's, it's a little bit clunky so I just mainly typed it in so next we're gonna go ahead and do an SCP dash R and we're gonna go copy the uh, entire tilde uh, dot SSH directory uh, to the server that we're going to go connect to. So we're going to do root at rhel1, which is the name of the host. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this in uh, tilde, um, you know, slash. So basically, I, you could just do a colon, um, but this is going to go, you know, actually put it that way. Um, this is going to go manually put it into the, the dot .ssh directory. So... I'm going to say yes, since I haven't connected to this host before. I'm going to type our password. And... Da, 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 da. Maybe it wants it that way. That's weird. So let's try it. Like so. All right, so that works. So now what's going to happen is is these these should exist over there, but they're not going to have the right permissions on them. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to type uh, SSH root at rhel1 and i'm going to go run the command chmod dash r 600 dot ssh so basically that's going to go ahead and change um, the dot ssh directory uh, and all files in it recursively to read write nothing nothing uh, for uh you know, the user having read write, the group having nothing, and other having nothing as well. So at this point, I can go ahead and do an up arrow and do echo hello. And I could get the response back, as you see that we did, without typing in a, in a password. So, all right, cool. So we're good there. So the next thing that we want to go do uh, is we want to go ahead and install or actually run. Uh, Visual Studio Code. So we can just type Visual. And we should see that pop up. <clears throat> we can then go ahead and launch this. And we'll give this a second to, to go ahead and run. So now we get this up and running. Um, so you can see uh, it's given us, you know, a number of different things saying like, hey, you can go ahead and set up your key bindings and install, you know, various different tools and language stuff. Uh, I'm going to go over here to the, the little blocks uh, kind of section. So this is uh, your extensions. You can also do Control Shift uh, X to get here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and it's going to go ask me what we want to go install. So we already have a couple things installed here. Uh, we've got Jupyter Notebooks and Python because we uh, installed those on the command line. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go in here and search for remote, and we'll give this a second. So it has remote containers, remote WSL, remote SSH. Uh, you know, remote SSH editing conf, remote development. Um, I'm going to go pick remote development, which is basically sort of a meta group of a bunch of these other, you know, um, configurations. I could probably just go pick remote SSH, <clears throat> but I'm just going to go do remote development because I think that's a more kind of generic version of this. And you can see here that's selecting those other packages for installation. So... Uh, at that point, we basically are, are good to go. Right? We see this guy uh, is now installed, and it's a little bit subtle, but you can see over here, right above this, you know, little blocks extension uh, icon over here, there is now a remote explorer icon. So that's what I want to go click on next. And if I go up here to the remote uh, explorer kind of section, I can go ahead and change the drop down to SSH targets, right? Now it's going to go see that there's no hosts that have been configured yet. Uh, so I can go click this little plus icon. And it's now going to go prompt me uh, to, you know, set up the host I want to go connect to. So I'm going to say SSH 
uh, I'm going to say root at uh, rhel1. And I'm going to hit return. I was going to ask me where I want to go set up my SSH keys. Do I want to go put this in the program data or do I want to have this be just my normal .ssh directory? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say my normal SSH directory. It doesn't really matter as long as it knows where it is. And it's going to ask me if I want to go connect. Um, so I found that when I hit that, it doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, but we do have the icon over here. So I can then go click on this. Um, actually, I can say connect to host and current window. And it's going to go take a second. You can see down here, this little green section, it's going to have the um, kind of spinning icon. It's going to ask what operating system it is. So I'm going to go select Linux. And you can see it's a little thing that said it's opening up the SSH connection. Uh, and now we can see that we've selected Linux here. Um, it's, you know, uh, keeping this information. It's just letting us know that. So I'm going to go close this. And at this point, it has now changed uh, from editing uh, on like localhost basically to editing on SSH and RHEL. If I go click on the little files icon over here, uh, we can say open folder. Uh, I'm just going to go pick the, the normal uh, directory so I can say OK, uh, basically the home directory. And this is root's home directory. So we've got um, you know a, a, a number of different things here. We've got Ansible, we've got Python, we've got some sample scripts that are there for the lab environment. Uh, there's also a .vs code server directory, which is basically where it stores data about the um, the information it's using for this remote session. And that's more or less it, right? If I go up here to run a terminal uh, and I go open up in terminal, um, you can see it pops up down here in the bottom. And I can do a uname dash a, and it comes back as your uh, remote Linux machine. So really, really simple. Um, but it's a, it's a very kind of nice uh, development environment. Now, I know a lot of the people who watch this, this channel are, are sort of, you know, uh, Linux uh, or Unix diehards, right? So they don't want to be in a Windows machine. <clears throat> but, you know, it's the reality of life sometimes. You know, you are going to be working in an environment where, you know, your employer is going to mandate that your desktop is, is Windows, right? Um, or you're in a position like I am where uh, I'm working with clients and they require um, some Windows software and uh, it just kind of is what it is. And, you know, despite the fact that VS Code is, is written by by Microsoft and I, I know some people um, don't like, you know, Microsoft uh, just sort of generally uh, or working with their, with their software, um, they've always made really, really, really good um, you know, development environments, right? So Visual Studio, just regular traditional Visual Studio uh, was always hands down either the best or at least among the best uh, IDEs in the business. And, you know, VS Code is is fantastic. Um, it's also open source. Uh, now I'm sure that there's, you know, people that will still not want to use it and that's completely fine. That's your call. Um, but it does have really easy, really simple integration for doing remote development stuff. So anyway, that's how to go ahead and install uh, VS Studio code on a Windows machine really quickly, really easily, and get it set up for uh, a remote uh, development, you know, setup with uh, with Chaco uh, as a package manager, which I think is probably the easiest and simplest way to, to go do it. So have a good one. Take care and bye-bye.